Tulsa, Oklahoma, a great city for those who call it home and for those sworn to protect it. My grandfather is on the charter when the FOP was founded in the 1930s here in Tulsa. There's four generations reflected with me on the police department. Um, my great granddad, times were different. He, different. he was here for a couple years, 1914 to 1916. My grandfather started in 1930 and then he and my dad overlapped because my dad started in 1956 and then when he retired, um, four or five years after he retired, I, uh, I'm, I came on. And you know how it is, you can't live in the town where your dad's the chief of police or the pastor of the largest church because they find out more about what you're doing before you ever even get home from doing it. Well, one of the biggest differences between the police department now and probably every, every generation of Stegie, except for maybe my great-grandfather was a wheel wore green. Technology had a huge change in, in, in everybody's life. I mean, when I, came, when I came to work for the police department, each squad may have two portable radios, and one of the two supervisors got one of them, or, both, or they each got one of them, or then maybe a senior officer got one of them, but you went to work without a portable radio on your hip. You went to work without a, you did not have a department issued flashlight. You did not have a taser. You did not have uh, pepper spray. You had eight channels on the radio. Um, to change the tone on the siren on your car when you're running code one, you flipped a switch. You took your hand off the steering wheel and flipped a switch. Uh, so technology-wise, things have changed a bunch. When we first started, man, we needed to take care of the folks who were being killed in the line of duty or injured in the line of duty. So I kind of call it the widows and orphans thing. We kind of got together and did the spiritual stuff that we need to do to make sure that survivors were taken care of. So, you know, the early part of the 20th century, the FOP focused on what's really core thing, and I think that's kind of followed us through. Then after that, probably middle of the 20th century is when we started working on, let's get the uh, pension system going, and that's how long our police pension system has been going ever since it was signed into law in the mid-50s. Then after that, now let's work on our day-to-day -day working conditions and our compensation. So that's the 70s, and in the 90s, it started getting a little bit more of the political stuff about how to make, when we sit down to negotiate, how to have it a little bit more teeth and how to have it to where folks would actually listen to us a little bit better at the negotiation table. I think now we're having to evolve into becoming more of a political group. Back prior to the 60s, if you made it to the rank of sergeant, you were guaranteed that. But above the rank of sergeant, that changed with every mayor. You got busted down or brought back up depending on which bootlegger backed which mayor and my grandfather got as high up as the assistant chief, which was chief, chief of detectives at the time. Another mayor comes in, another bootlegger backs him, and he got moved down to midnight shift desk sergeant. Um, about the time my dad got on and kind of got his feet under, them, under him was when civil service and some retirement plans started making it through the state. Um, so they got a little bit better. And then I remember this growing up in my dad's house. All of a sudden, like the mid to early 70s, we actually could start like buying real food instead of dry food. And now that I did my FOP stint, I learned that's when the fire and police arbitration law went into effect. All a union is, is a group of people that have banded together to say, we want more professionalism in our police department. We want to provide our officers with a safe, secure, and um, potent place to work so that they don't go looking for a job somewhere else. The union helps us make sure that we've got a workforce that's ready to go out on the street. If we don't have a union, then the police officers don't have a bargaining position against the all-powerful city or municipality. And what's going to happen? They're not going to make the wages that they should make. So other cities or other states will offer more attractive wages, and those highly skilled, uh, dependable, reliable police officers are going to go someplace else. 
To be an FOP member is to be a group of a brotherhood and sisterhood. Uh, the FOP represents all Tulsa police officers, active and retired. And our number one goal is to be that fraternal order, a place for police officers to go to interact with each other. They have shared interests and shared experiences. And so to be a member of that just gives us as police officers a group to go to where we feel like we're a part and we have a support group. Our side is, as police officers, is we're the ones out there on the streets. We're the ones responding to the emergencies, going and talking to the citizens on a daily basis, working in the neighborhoods. And so we, as police officers on the street, have a different point of view than management sometimes has. Well, the FOP is very involved in the community. We want our officers uh, to not only obviously do their duty and serve the citizens while at work, but the FOP gives them a chance to get involved away from work as well. We've done events like Adopt-a-Spot events in each council district where we go out with the counselors and the citizens and pick up trash in the neighborhood and, and work side by side with citizens. Uh, we're a huge sponsor of the Oklahoma Special Olympics through the Law Enforcement Torch Run. Uh, for two years in a row, we've been the number one sponsor of that event. And so again, it gets us tied in with the community. We do the polar plunge every year. Uh, we meet and interact with athletes and citizens and their parents. And, and it just, again, gives our members a chance to get involved in the community outside of uh, law enforcement and police work. It is the political arm of the Tulsa Lodge 93. One of our functions is to interact with our elected government leaders uh, locally and at the state and national level. Um, the reason we do that is because uh, elected members of the government or politicians affect everything we do in law enforcement, whether it's the laws that are passed that we enforce or whether it's our pay and benefits, which the FOP uh, negotiates the contract with the city. Um, and so we want to be involved in that process. We want to interact with the uh, elected officials and let them know what our issues are. Um, we know a huge part of that is having some financial backing so that we can support those candidates who support us uh, and help them either stay in office or get elected. As Tulsa policemen, um, two-thirds of our membership at any one time is on duty. And that's a little different than the firefighters and other, other organizations. With the firefighters, two-thirds of their membership is off duty at any one time. And in the modern political arena, politicians understand two things, organized people or organized money. And I understand as a Tulsa policeman that life and work become very busy. And we don't have the ability to do things like march on the Capitol, attend city hall meetings with any regularity. So that puts us into the other the other category, which is organized money. Well, the number one thing that we look for as the FOP is for our elected officials to just give us a chance to speak to them, give us time to present our side of law enforcement issues, uh, police officer rank and file issues. Uh, and so we're really just asking for their time to hear our side. They already they're able to hear the city management side, the police chief obviously has access, and all we're asking for from the rank and file, which is what the FOP represents, is the same opportunity to give our side and, and show it from our point of view, so that when they're voting and making decisions on law enforcement issues, they've heard from all sides and they get a chance to make an informed decision. Why wouldn't you want to help police officers? Uh, who do you call when somebody breaks into your home? Well, who do you call when your car breaks down uh, and you're in a, in a bad part of town? Or who do you call when you're in an accident? Or who do you want on your side when somebody is um, uh, uh, threatening some force against you? Um, I wanna help police officers. Let's keep our well-trained, our professional, and the best of Tulsa's law enforcement right here in Tulsa. And contributions to the PAC will help us do that. Will you join with me and give money to our PAC, the FOP PAC? Thank you very much.